sacrifice that they shall come and drink therein but but bad enough look at verse 3 it tells us in verse 3 then they brought the golden vessels which were taken out of the temple of the house of god can you see the profanity can you see the indecency can you see all the evil that the man did but while we are pointing one finger to him the other four fingers are pointed your direction because as it was profane many people in the world they profane like that and they dwell in profanity and they dwell in evil their lives are blasphemous against the lord and then it says it's from the house of the god that was at jerusalem and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank, drank in them look at verse 4 now in verse 4 they drank wine and praised the god of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone have you noticed his father had raised up had seen that idol in chapter 2 he had seen the head of gold and now they praise the god of gold he had seen the breast and the arms of silver now they praise the god of silver he had seen the trunk of brass and they praise the god of brass and then the god of iron and of wood and of stone that's the profanity of the man the profanity of those women wives and concubines and the profanity of those princes were told then in verse 5 in verse 5 in the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand god was now about to ask can you blame god if men became corrupt corrupted corrupting can you blame god if men women are defiled and defiling can you blame god if men and women are profane are dirty are corrupted and they change the glory of god into something which is uh, disgraceful can you blame god that's why he brought judgment now we're talking about them let me talk about the world in which we live micah chapter 7 i'm looking at verse 3 in micah chapter 7 verse 3 that they may do evil with both hands and a slave the people in our world you included because some have sinned and come short of the glory of god they do evil with both hands they do evil earnestly the priest asketh and the judge asketh for a reward and the great man he uttereth his mischievous desire so they wrap it up that's a world and that is the condition of everyone in the world they are defiled they are defiling they are profane and they influence other people to be profane look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says the best of them is as a prior the most upright is sharper than the sun edge the day of thy watchmen and thy visitation cometh now shall be there perplexity that's the world in which we are living all have seen and come short of the glory of god not to let that all have seen they do evil with both hands with their heart with their mind with their understanding with their intelligence with their education everything they have they put into doing evil and they put into the great dressing god defiling god and defiling other people and making them defile we're told in the new testament in ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 17 this i say therefore and testify in the lord that ye henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk 
in the vanity of their mind. Belshazzar was walking in the vanity of his mind. The men, the women around you and yourself, you have been walking in the vanity of your mind. And vanity of vanities, all is vanity. From my great, great, great grandfathers, they were corrupted at the time of Noah. And then after Noah, they continue in their profanity and corruption and we have inherited that with them. We have the depravity and we have the dirty things and the defiling things and our lives as God weighs us in the balance, in the scale of eternity. Our lives are not acceptable unto him because we have been walking in the vanity of our mind. In verse 18, verse 18 says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, separated from the life of God. What's the life of God? A life of love. No, we don't have love. We have hatred. What's the life of God? A life of holiness and righteousness. What's her life? Unrighteousness and on holiness, walking against, alienated and separated from the life of God. What's the life of God? The life of truth. But our life is the life of deception. We're liars. We lie with action. We lie with the word of mouth. And we lie in everything that we do. We are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Belshazzar was blind, blind to his own goodness, blind to his own prosperity, and blind to the favor of God and the virtue he ought to manifest before the Lord. And everyone on earth is also like that, blind, blind to salvation, blind to righteousness, blind to an eternity with the almighty God. And it tells us in verse 19, verse 19, who have been past feeling, past feeling. Now, it's talking about the generality of people, and it's applicable to Belshazzar, past feeling. All he did, he took those vessels of the Lord holy vessels to worship the Lord and they took that from the uh, from Jerusalem the headquarters of the of God Almighty as the people worship the Lord and now what he did all those wives together all those concubines together all those counselors together all those princes together what he did, he did without feeling, even any feeling of guilt, any feeling of condemnation. And there are people like that today, they have got to the point, they lie, no guilt. They misbehave, no guilt. They, they gather women together, almost like headmaster of a school of girls, of ladies, no guilt. Concubines, wives and concubines, no guilt, drinking and drunkenness, no guilt, smoking, either they are smoking cigarettes or smoking marijuana or weed, there is no guilt, all the evil that they do, and they ill treat other people, they're cruel, and they have no guilt because they have been past feeling. And they've given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, reading from verse 17, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17, be not overmuch wicked. Beshazzar, when you married one wife, and you even married in the wrong way, God left you alone. He didn't even bother you at that time. Second wife, third wife, God left you alone. He didn't even bother you. Concubines, concubines. And God was saying, maybe he will repent. Maybe he will see the repentance of his father, Nebuchadnezzar. And then he'll wake up, he'll come to himself. And then princes. And then he gathered them together. Then he made a feast. Then he said, go take all those vessels in the house of God. I am going to drink out of them. I'm going to spite the God of heaven. Belshazzar, 
be not over much wicked. My friends, you're going and going, you're over speeding, and you're getting near the point of no return. Be not over much wicked, liar. You've been lying about this and lying about that, and now the next lie you tell against somebody that will deal with you, be not over much wicked. You have been running after women, the person's wife, poor man's wife, and the fellow knows, but the fellow can do nothing against you. And then you go to that, you go to that, and now you're picking another woman, and the husband of that woman, he will not show you only pepper, he will show you dead. Be not over much wicked. You have been drinking and drinking, and now the end of the year is coming, uh, and you're spinning off. It's like you're in a hurry to die. You're in a hurry to go to hell. Be not over much wicked. You have been disrespectful and you have been dishonoring you've done it to this and the people said leave him alone it's like that that's his life and now you want to do another one and this one may cost you your life that's why it says be not of a much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time be sure, sir. This way you are going. Be not over much wicked. Why don't you repent? And the Lord is talking to you tonight and is saying, Enough is enough. See what you have done. See where you have been. See what your life has been. Be not over much wicked. Halt. Stop. Turn around. Repent. And throw your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender. But. If, after all you have heard, after all you have seen, you still keep on and keep on and keep on, the road of the sinner is slippery. And you might just lie like that, and something coming behind you will run over you, and you are gone. And where will you spend eternity? Be not over much wicked. Neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? That's Belshazzar. And those are the, the unbelievers today, and they like they live. And this you today, see the way you have been going. The irreverent feast and awful or restrained profanity. Let's come to number two now. He saw that at writing on the wall. With all the education of Babylon and with all the development and civilization, early civilization of Babylon, the man could not read the handwriting on the wall because he wasn't a child of God and it's the writing of God and you cannot read the writing and the language of heaven here on earth since you don't have the spirit of God to interpret unto you. And eventually, when that hand appeared and he saw the writing, he knew because he saw the hand. He saw just the finger writing. He didn't see the rest of the body holding that hand. And he wrote and wrote and wrote. And then all the taste for alcohol, everything went. All the pleasure and desire for women and prostitutes and, uh, and for concubines. All the pleasure went. And all the earthly desires, everything went. He began to shake. He began to tremble, and he wanted an interpreter, and all the magicians, they couldn't read. They tried, they made an effort, that's what they always do. They get into a religious language, a religious mood, a religious atmosphere, and they do all their rigmaroles, but they could not. They didn't understand the writing, they didn't understand what was there on the wall until the queen came and said, Belshazzar, there is somebody in the kingdom. He used to interpret for your father, Nebuchadnezzar. His interpretation brought repentance 
and his interpretation was always truthful and factual and straight to the point called Daniel and then they called Daniel and as they called uh, Daniel the man uh, was still promising uh, I'll give you this I'll give you that if you interpret for me let's look at Daniel chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 10 now the queen uh, by reason uh, of the words of the king and his lords came uh, into the banquet house and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. That's what you always say, live forever. The man died that night. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee. Let not, not let thy countenance be changed. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, there is a man in thy kingdom. How wonderful would it be? that they can point to you if you're a true believer you are a believer in the time of Nebuchadnezzar you were a believer in the regime of the government that passed away and now today you have not backslidden you have not compromised you have not become fearful you have not become timid you're still the man you were with the salvation of God, with the holiness and the purity of God, and with the uncompromising spirit that a child of God ought to retain, you're still the practical, positive, penetrating preacher that you used to be. There is a man. Can we say that about you? Or have you compromised? Have you succumbed? Have you submitted your right? your responsibility and your spirit and your fervency and your forthrightness have you cowered down have you bowed to them as the system of the world taking taking care of you that now you cannot stand you wobble you are afraid you're timid you cannot open your mouth and declare the truth now you are sunday sunday christian monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday you are part of the world but daniel the grace a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy ghost and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king nebuchadnezzar thy father the king i say thy father made master of the magicians and the astrologers and the chaldeans and the sociers then in verse 12 in verse 12 for as much as an excellent spirit when somebody is saved, the kind of spirit that comes in his life, excellent spirit. When somebody is sanctified and is made holy and he gives his life, he wills his life to the Lord. Without reservation, he has the excellent spirit. When somebody is saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost and he has the power, the power to declare the truth anywhere and everywhere an excellent spirit was found in him what kind of spirit do you have do you have the excellent spirit that says that does excellent things are you truly born again are you really a child of god and anywhere you are anywhere you stand do you have that excellent spirit and then it says he had understanding he had knowledge and the interpretation of dreams and the showing of hard sentences the showing the discovering the revealing of hard sentences the solving doubts where were found in the same daniel whose whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. And so Daniel was called, and Daniel now told the king, Keep your gift to yourself, but I will show you the interpretation. We need faithful interpreters in our churches, we need faithful preachers 
in our churches that will tell the sinner what God has said on the final edge of the sinner. We don't need motivators. We don't need liars on the pulpit. We don't need people that were paid sinners at the back on the pulpit. We don't need entertainers on the pulpit. We need preachers, interpreters, evangelists that will tell the truth as the truth is. We don't need people that will make sinners laugh and laugh their lives unto hell. We need people that will stand now. Let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. And he came and he was light. You become light. I said you become light. Amen. Don't you love the truth? If you love the truth, raise up your hand. Do you want entertainment? I said, you want entertainment? No. If we're going to get saved, we need interpretation. If we're going to get the fulfillment of the promise of God, we need the proper interpretation of the word of God. That's why we have the crusade, the gospel for every creature. We're not here to entertain drunkards entertain smokers entertain womanizers entertain adulterers entertain the people on their way to hell we come here to arrest them and to turn them around and to give them the proper interpretation of the word that will make them call on the god of heaven and have the salvation of the lord you will have the salvation of the lord i Say, I, I will have the salvation of the Lord. Be it fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 5. Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 5. For this ye know, that no monger, no unclean person, Beshazzar, unclean person those wives those women unclean those concubines unclean those counselors unclean and what daniel was saying is this you are waged in the balances as unclean people and in the sight of god you are not worthy of heaven. Only Christ can make you worthy. And tonight, I pray, you give your life to the Lord and you become worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. No covetous man who is an idolater. No a covetous man who is an idolater. A covetous man, he wants money and he makes money the idol. A covetous man, he knows what other people have. He wants to grab what they have. Those things he's coveting becomes the idol. But now he wants to kind of push away all the idols, all the covetousness. He wants to separate from the feast and the company of Belshazzar so that he can get to heaven at last. Has they don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, let no man deceive you. Let no entertainer deceive you. And let no liar of a preacher deceive you. It says with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of a disobedience conversion will come to you today you'll not be a child of disobedience anymore but a person that turns away and says the shall go your way i will not follow you and then if you have been a woman and you have been in line with Belshazzar, you say Belshazzar, eternity is long I will not continue with you. And you turn and you repent and you say, Lord, I come to you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my might. 
be not deceived. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. I pray that your life will turn around. I said your life will turn around. Night club, night drinking, night drunkenness, and secret adultery, and secret fornication. Tonight, the Lord will cleanse and brush up from your life in Jesus' name. That can write him. Many, many, tickle, perishing, that showed that God had waged Belshazzar and the people there, and they were found wanting. In your own case, the judgment of God will pass away from you. I said will pass away from you. And you know what? If the preacher is clear, the people responding to the preaching must be clear. That's the purpose. Belshazzar was told the judgment of God that had come. It should immediately have fallen on his feet and say, God, I'm sorry for the profanity. I'm sorry for the defilement. I'm sorry for the evil in my life. And mercy would have come. After all, that's how his father, Nebuchadnezzar, received the mercy of God. But he was still acting like, okay, Daniel, that's good. Bring a chain and hang on his neck. I said, I'll give you gift. Even though you said you didn't want the gift, I give you this, I give you this. A dying man, a man on his way to hell, offering gift to a preacher of the word of God. We don't need that. The response of your life is what you need. That you will say, Lord, I come. I am sorry for the evil, for the profanity, and for the defilement in my life. Lord, I come just as I am, without any excuse, Jesus, I come to thee. And as you come tonight, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will save you. And the judgment hanging on your head, that judgment will vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now. Point number three, the inevitable fulfillment of awesome, unchangeable prophecies. We're looking at Daniel chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25. Daniel chapter 5, verse 25. This is that the writing that was written. Many, many take you person. Look at verse 26. It says, this is the interpretation of the sin. Many God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God he is the God of all power. He is the God of all decision. And nobody can go a step further, a day further, a week further without the approval and the consent of heaven. And this man had nothing to do with heaven. He didn't relate to the God of heaven. He didn't relate to a Christ from heaven. He didn't relate to the appearance of the fourth one. His appearance is like the Son of God. He didn't relate to the Son of God. He knew of the Spirit, the excellent Spirit. He didn't relate with the excellent Spirit. He had nothing to do with heaven. All right. Since you do not know and you do not accept that the God of heaven is the God of all the earth. Now, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. I pray your life will not finish now. I pray your kingdom will not finish now. If you connect with the God of heaven, if you connect with Christ from heaven, if you connect with the Spirit of God and say, Lord, I've been living my life in isolation, all alone by myself, but now I recognize you as my creator. 
Now, I recognize Christ as my Savior, my Redeemer. I recognize Christ as my Redeemer and my Lord and my Savior and the Holy Spirit as my helper, as my comforter that comes to help me come to Christ. I will not resist you anymore. A new life will begin for you. A new chapter will begin for you. A new lease of life will begin for you. He will forgive the past and he will set you free and then you will live a profitable life from now on in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, take hail. Thou art which in the balances and art found wanting. You are weighed in the balances and you are found wanting. To be wanting means you lack. You don't have the ticket that will make you have a place in that heavenly airplane to take you to the better country. And they say, even your passport, if you have any kind of passport, this one is fake. Where did you get this? This one was issued in a fake office. We've we'll been trying to track down those people issuing days of a passport. Come on here. And they locked the fellow up. But if you really want to get to that country, a better land, Beulah land, land of promise, heaven, you need the passport that is issued by Christ from heaven because he died so that he'll make the passage for you to get to heaven. And because of him, you'll become worthy. Tonight, you'll become worthy. Tonight, you'll become worthy. Look at the man, the centurion came and he said, Master, my servant is tormented and vexed at home. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the man said, I am not worthy. Speak the word only. I am wanting, I am lacking, I am not worthy. But if you will accept me, if you will bless me, if you speak, your word of healing and your word of salvation and your word of forgiveness and the word of freedom, then my servant shall be healed. And Jesus said, I've not found no, not no great faith like this in Israel. And he said, because of your faith, I make you worthy. Your servant is healed. And tonight, because of your repentance, and because of your soft heart, because of your confession, knowing I am not worthy, I pray that as you give your life to the Lord tonight, your sins will be forgiven. Your sickness will be healed. He will make you worthy. And then he'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. You will be worthy in Jesus' name. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, watch and pray that he may be accounted worthy. That he may be accounted worthy. If you are careless, you'll say, okay, I hear. But I don't care. I hear. I don't mind. I hear. I'm not going to appeal to heaven. You remain not wanting. You remain unworthy. Watch and pray that he may be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. And tonight, you'll be worthy. There'll be no lack in your faith. There'll be no lack in your trust. There'll be no lack in your repentance. You'll be worthy tonight in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen there? And to the angel of the church is man right. I've not found your work perfect in my sight, but thou hast a few names. They shall walk with me in white because they are worthy. A few names, and you can be part of that, part of those a few names that your garment spiritually, the garment of righteousness is washed white in the blood of the Lamb. And then he says, they will walk with me in white. They are worthy. 
the Lord make you worthy tonight. The worthiness of Christ will come to your account. And the Lord himself will say, yes, I've heard your prayer. I know you spoke with conviction and you spoke with determination. I will not go on in the lifestyle of Belshazzar in defilement, in profanity anymore. Lord Jesus, receive me. He will receive you tonight in Jesus' name. But Belshazzar, you was just looking, okay, I hear. He didn't want to respond appropriately. And now we're told in verse 28, in verse 28, Paris, the kingdom is divided and given to the maids and the passions. That night, the story ended abruptly. Your story will not end like that. Your life will not be wasted like that. Your future will not stop like that. You will continue in the way of the Lord and you come to Christ. You and Christ, you'll be worthy. You and salvation, you'll be worthy. And you and the redemption of the Lord, you'll be worthy in Jesus' name. Lord, make him worthy. Lord, make her worthy. And when you are worthy like that, heaven will be your home at last in Jesus' name. And while you are here on earth, if you are sick, it will heal you. If you are tormented, it will deliver you. As you say, like the centurion, with the centurion, Lord, I am not worthy, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. It will turn your unworthiness to worthiness in Jesus' name. Your lack, it will turn to fulfillment and completeness in Jesus' name. But don't act like Belshazzar. Don't remain like Belshazzar, profane, defiling, sinful, incorrigible, and remaining in evil. You turn around to say, Lord, Christ is my worthiness. Christ is my savior. Christ is my redeemer. And I come on the basis of Christ. For my tears forever flow, and my zeal no respite, no. All these for sin cannot atone, thou and thou alone must save. It's ready to save you now. Are you ready to be saved? It's ready to forgive you now. Are you ready to be forgiven? It's ready to make you worthy. Are you ready to become worthy? I'm asking a question. Ready? 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 Yes. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. He's the only one that can make us worthy of heaven. Everyone without heavenly age, everyone without the heavenly Savior, everyone without the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of Calvary is unworthy. Everyone only worthy of hell. But as you come to Christ tonight and you say, Lord, you are my worthiness. He'll forgive your sin. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You're coming to Christ now. And you're saying, Lord, I give myself to you. I surrender my heart, my life to you. I know with my present life, defilement, sinfulness, iniquity, and with my present corruption in life, I know I am unworthy, unworthy of heaven. But I hand over all those evil things in my life unto Christ, so that you make me worthy. Whatever you are, you want him to make you worthy of salvation, forgiveness, freedom, grace, Mercy, heaven, wherever you are, raise up that hand 
God bless you there. God bless you there. Online, anywhere you are, here is the moment Christ alone will make you worthy. So, raise up your hand. Wherever you are, you are watching over the television, you are listening to the radio, raise up that hand. He'll make you worthy. He'll make you worthy. He, by his worthiness, will pass all that worthiness unto you. Remember, the sinner is not worthy by himself, by herself. A concubine is not worthy by herself. A womanizer is not worthy by himself. A drunkard is not worthy by himself. A religious liar is not worthy by himself. But as you come to Christ and say, Lord, here I am. It is Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer that makes you worthy. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up and identify God bless you there. You want to be worthy of heaven. You don't want to go to hell when you die. You want to be worthy of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, of the salvation of the Lord. Stand up wherever you are. He is the one that will make you worthy. He didn't come to entertain you anytime, any evening. He came to tell you the truth, how you can be worthy of the salvation of the Lord by turning away from sin and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Raise up your hands and stand up, stand up, stand up, wherever you are. And as you are there, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, I turn away from everything that makes me unworthy. And I come to you for forgiveness, for freedom, for salvation. Lord, grant me that forgiveness and salvation. Now tell the Lord, tell the Lord, the Lord himself will give you his own salvation that makes you worthy. Amen. Amen. Father, I'm praying for you now. Keep up that hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, according to your promise, we know all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And everyone is unworthy, unworthy of heaven, unworthy of salvation. But Christ is a worthiness. I pray, O oh Lord Christ, because of your death on the cross of Calvary. I pray, Lord, forgive them, set them free, give them your salvation in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit will bear witness in their heart that although they were wanting before, Christ, by salvation, Christ, by substitution, Christ, by taking all their sins upon himself has now made them worthy. I pray, Lord, write the name of every one of them in your book of life in heaven in Jesus' name. Confirm the salvation. Confirm the forgiveness. Confirm the freedom. And make them worthy. And when Christ shall come, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive shall be taken up to heaven. I pray that these will be among the number that will get to heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Another amen. A global amen. The Lord be with you. Keep on standing there. You receive the salvation of the Lord. And now he writes your name among the people that are worthy. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will give you the slip of paper to fill. And you feel correctly. No more lying. No more deception. A new creature in Christ who is worthy now of heaven will not continue the old way. I call on an officiating minister tonight uh, to help us for the counseling time. Congratulations. 
heaven is rejoicing because of you. Angels are jubilating and celebrating because of you. What a glorious decision you have made tonight. Unforgettable decision. The decision that will begin a new history in your life. Therefore, you attend to the few questions that have been asked of you so that we can help you further. We'll be praying for you and we'll be reaching you, encouraging you. Supply the details. You write in capital letters. And the phone numbers, make sure 11 digits. And ensure that you supply all the necessary information. As you are writing your name now, because of the decision, heaven is writing your name in the book of God, in the book of life. What a glorious privilege. What a wonderful privilege. As heaven is rejoicing because of you, congratulations, and you are welcome into the heavenly family, the family of God, the family of the saints you have been hearing about, the family of the people that have gone before. Congratulations. Your joy will be permanent. Your experience will be permanent. Please, our counselors, let's ensure we get the details correctly so that you supply the correct address so that when we pray for you, the prayer will meet you at your very address. I pray the miracle of God will never miss your address in Jesus' name. So therefore, make sure you give us the correct address so that we be a target and a receiver of God's blessings. If you are just giving your life unto the Lord online, you will see a link under that's below your player. Just click that link and complete the form and send it immediately. We will capture you. Heaven will capture you. The book of life will capture you and you become a candidate. Fit. Qualified. Made worthy for the kingdom of God. What an experience. So therefore, if you are online, do the same thing. Heaven is rejoicing because of you today. The whole of angels are celebrating on your behalf. What a privilege. Counselors, let's go around. Please, let's go far back. Probably we have some that overflow across the fence. Let's ensure we touch everywhere. Once you finish where you are, you can move to the next person close to you. I see some people standing on my right hand side. Please let's attend to them. Please let's do that thoroughly. Even though we have fast about it, but please let's do it thoroughly. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name, phone number, and your location address via either SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234-91-54-44-92-63. I take it again, 
plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, four, four, nine, four, four, nine, two, six, three. Just send your name and your particulars. Counselors, we are waiting for you tonight. The mercy of God that saves is the same mercy also that heals and delivers. The complete work of God's mercy will be accomplished in our life tonight in Jesus' name. Mercy for salvation. Mercy for healing. And our counselors, after you have finished, don't leave the, you know, the place where you are. Look at the people that have challenges around you. Tonight, there will be galore of testimonies. There will be a pandemonium of joy here tonight. There will be unprecedented celebration tonight. Somebody is saying, Amen there. So therefore, get ready. If you are not being counseled, bow your head and say, oh Lord, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. The mercy that saves is the same mercy that heals. The Satyrus said, I'm not worthy. But because of his encounter with Christ, he became worthy. Worthy of the salvation, and his servant was healed as well. Double blessing for you. Counselors, we are waiting for you. If you are true at your section, you want to see the supervisors raising all the flag to notify us. On the far right, if you are finished, let's see the flag of identification that you are true. Any flag there? At the center here, if you are true, can we see the flag from the supervisors? Let's be fast at it, but let's be thorough about it as well. This is the nucleus of GCK, the gospel to every creature. On my left hand side, if you are through, can you please wave the flag to us so that we can identify that you are true? Can I see any flag up? All right, some people are still standing. Please let's reach to them on time. Right far at the back. Please let's ensure the counselors reach to those people standing at the back. Please signify if you are true. All right. We can see on the right-hand side. How about the far, very close to the campus hall? Can we see your flag if there is anyone? Raise it up properly so that you can see. All right. At the center here, at the back, supervisors, can we see your flag? Please let's be fast about it, but also thorough about it. And the rest of us, let's be praying. The miracle of mercy will reach unto you tonight. Oh, Lord, here am I. Whatever challenge you brought here will not follow you home. The name of Jesus will crush everything tonight. Right at my left-hand side, supervisors, can we have an indication you are through? Any hands there? Any flag there? 
all right. You can see at the front there, at the center. How about the far back? Far, far back. Can you wave to us? All right. You can see right there. We are getting prepared now as our pastor comes up. Miracle of mercy for you tonight. Miracle of mercy for you tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, pleading with him, asking him. In verse 6, it says, And saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And then in verse 7, Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. He will come and heal you. Tonight, he has come to heal you. I will come. He'll get to you there. He'll get to you there. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. That's all right. He called him Lord. He made him Lord of his life. It was a centurion. And yet, he called him Lord. The moment you call him Lord, Savior, healer, deliverer, I surrender my life to you, Lord. I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. No oil, speak the word only. You don't have to come home and lay hands on that person. Speak the word only. The healing word of the Lord is coming to you tonight. It will heal you. And my servant shall be healed. I will be healed. I will be healed. That tumor will vanish away. That blindness will vanish away. That paralysis will vanish away. And that pile will vanish away. That cancer will vanish away tonight. My servant, my body shall be healed. The, close your eyes now. Lay one hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand. Remember, speak the word only. And you come with assurance. You accept with assurance. You receive with assurance. My servant shall be healed. Your healing has come tonight. I am not worthy, but I call you Lord. I receive you as Lord. I know you are the Lord of my life, every circumstance in my life. Now that I've taken you as Lord, your worthiness becomes my worthiness, and I shall be healed. The Lord is coming to you with healing right now. After the final amen, you check up, that miracle would have been deposited there. Raise up that hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge here, online, everywhere. Miracle has come. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God of wonders, the God of power, the God of worthiness, and the God of great performance and manifestation. Come to all your people as they own Jesus and their Lord. Heal them in Jesus' name. That insanity, that madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes and those dim eyes, the Lord touch your eyes right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. The deafness that you have, the dumbness that you have, the Lord is by your side right now. A miracle that loosens your tongue, a miracle that opens your deaf ears, come upon you now in Jesus' name. And all the tumor, 
all the swelling in your body, elephantiasis, hernia, fibroid, goiter, hunchback, I command now, you are released, come out in Jesus' name. Ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. And that tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. COVID, be healed in Jesus' name. HIV, AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. All incurable diseases in your body, be taken away right now. Lord, in a definite way, in a spectacular manner, give the healing to everyone as we call you Lord now in Jesus' name. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Manifestation of your love and mercy and grace everywhere in Jesus' name. You're healed. You are healed. 